We were all really surprised at how much additional blood it took in order to save their lives compared to people who uh, had had very serious injuries but hadn't been the victims of specifically a gunshot attack. If you're operating a, a hospital that uh, cares for trauma patients, you have to have uh, ample blood supply ready for deployment on short notice, uh, and not only red blood cells, but also plasma, platelets, and cryoprecipitate, because the requirements for all four of those blood components were increased uh, for the gunshot victims. Here in the blood bank, uh, we are completely committed to our trauma program and to our trauma patients. And what that means for us is that we keep as much blood as we possibly can ready to go just in case somebody who is a victim of trauma comes to the hospital and needs it. Uh, we end up activating our massive transfusion protocol, which is a predetermined program that we've set up uh, to quickly provide a lot of blood to people who need it. We activate that hundreds of times a year. Now we're even more passionate uh, and even more aware of all of the ways that this gunshot violence is affecting our communities um, and our hospitals and our blood bank all together. We should be doing something about the gun problem because you, you know that um, for the last 20 years there's been a federal moratorium on gun violence research, uh, so federal funding has not been available uh, to study gun violence and, and methods uh, to solve the problem. Uh, I think uh, if you look at methods of violence prevention or uh, any, any uh, methods to, to reduce uh, gunshot injuries, uh, that's what we have to focus on next.